Welcome to Engineering Studio with Dr. Mohammad Tahir. In this video, we are going to discuss about the concept of effective area when sum of the cross section is connected. So we need to use effective net area concept for calculating the strength. So A E will be equal to U time A N. Net area time reduction factor or shear lag factor. So it is the case when sum of the area of the section is connected but if the whole area is connected then this shear lag factor will be equal to 1 and then AE will be equal to AN. So question is why we need to reduce this net area. So if we see this figure so here we have a channel section but only the web of this channel is connected with this plate and in the flanges of this channel section if we see at this critical section for example over here the member or the legs of this member these flanges will not be stressed 100% so they will be either partially stressed or unstressed so the only area which is resisting this applied load will be this much area and this shaded area or this dark area will not be effective to resist the applied load so we can say that our whole net area is not effective to resist the applied load. There is some area which is unstressed. So we need to use this reduction factor on net area to get the effective area which is actually resisting the applied loads. So similarly over here if we see we have angle section so the unconnected leg will be unstressed only this there will be stress in the connected leg and some part of the unconnected leg. And if we compare the stress values at different points, so if we see in this plate, so this plate will be connected uniformly. And this angle section away from the connection will be having constant stress in both the legs, but at the section, at the criticals or at the joint, this connected leg will have constant stress, but this unconnected leg will have maximum stress near to the or uh, adjacent to this connected leg but as it goes away from this connected leg so the stress in that leg will go on reducing. So to account for that we need to apply this reduction factor and this reduction factor is termed as shear lag factor. So effective net area if we want to calculate the effective net area so in case of welded connections, so if our section, if for example we have a channel section and this is gathered plate and it is connected with the gathered plate with only perpendicular weld. So in that case we consider AE is equal to U time A and we consider this shear lag factor equal to 1 and this area will not be the grass area but it will be only the area of this connected leg. So A will be equal to area of connected part only. And if this angle section is connected with the help of these longitudinal welds, in that case we consider AE is equal to grass area, I mean the total area of this angle times the U factor. So here U is equal to 1 for L greater than 2W. If the length of weld is greater than 2 time of this distance between the two welds, so we can use this U is equal to 1 or otherwise if it is between 2 time and 1.5 time of W then we can consider it 0 0.87 and if it is between 1.5 and 1 then we can consider U is equal to 0 0.75. Okay, in case of bolted connections, the strength reduction factor is calculated by using this formula and its value should be less than 0 0.9. Here x bar is the eccentricity of connection. So what it means if we see this is the angle when we apply a tension load. So the whole angle will be stressed uniformly. So the resultant tensile force will be passing from the centroid of this section. So centroid of section will lie somewhere over here and this leg is connected so at the connection 
the applied force is passing from here but the resistive force is passing from this plate so applied force is passing from this location and the resistive force is passing from this over here at the centroid of this gathered plate so there will be eccentricity between the applied load as well as the resistive load at the connection so this eccentricity is x bar so it is the eccentricity of connection and l is the length of the connection so the center to center distance between the bolts in one row so it will be equal to l so from the first to the last so x bar distance between centroid of element to the plane of load transfer and l is the length of connection in the direction of load so next is shear lag factor so it is very important to understand how we can calculate the shear lag factor so in aisc code a table is given for different scenarios or for different sections different connection details the value of shear lag factor is given okay so shear lag factor for connections to tension member so the first case is all tension members where the tension load is transmitted directly to each of the cross sectional member by fasteners or weld so in that case we will consider this u is equal to 1 if all the members are all the parts of the section are connected for example we have this angle section if both the legs are connected then the shear lag factor will be equal to 1 similarly in case of w section if this flange is connected this web is connected so in that case this u will be equal to 1 shear lag factor will be equal to 1 so actually in that case the whole member will be having equal stress at the section as well when all the parts are connected but if some parts are connected for this section for example all tension members except hss where the tension load is transmitted to some but not all the cross section so in that case we need to calculate this u value by using this formula so as we have seen in the previous case if in case of angle only this one leg is connected so the distance from this centroid up to this plane of transfer of load we need to consider this distance and the length of the connection we need to consider to calculate this u value but in case of angle it is very simple to understand what is this x bar but in case of w section t section it is uh complicated or we need to understand that concept so for example if we see this w section s section or m section so in that case if web is connected if this web is connected so in that case if we see the centroid of the section will lie inside the web but it is not the case in that case we need to consider it as a c or channel section we will consider it as a channel section and then we determine its centroid so it will be actually consisting of two channel section so for this channel section we will come determine its centroid and the distance from this centroid up to the load transfer plane that will be termed as x so here we can see so the distance from this centroid up to the centroid of this section is x bar similarly if instead of web the flanges are connected if both the flanges are connected then we convert it into t so it will be converted into two t's and we need to consider these two t's separately so for first t we need to determine its centroid and then we determine the distance from the connection or the surface of connection up to the centroid so that will be termed as x bar similarly it will be done for the bottom t to calculate this u value for angle section it is simpler simple just need to determine the centroid and then the distance between the failure load transfer plane and in case of t it will be similar to this one here we have converted into two t so first determine the centroid of this t and then the distance between the load transfer plane up to that centroid will be x bar okay so the third case is all tension member where the tension load is transmitted only by trans works well to some part but not all of the cross section elements so the first case in the previous slide so 
here if the connection is only with this transverse weld between the gathered plate and the member in that case we will consider only this leg of the section of the angle we do not consider to we do not consider this leg while calculating the area so u will be equal to 1 but a will be equal to area of leg 1 only one leg area will be considered or only area of that part will be considered which is connected with the transverse weld okay next is for plates angles channels with welds at the heels t's and w's w shape with connected elements where the tension load is transmitted by longitudinal weld only and if there is only longitudinal welds in this direction I mean if we have a channel section and here we have a plate so it will be connected at this point and at this point in the longitudinal direction like this so in that case we need to use this formula to calculate the shear leg factor and here w is the distance between these two welds l is actually the average of l1 plus l2 and x bar is the distance between the centroid of the member up to the load transfer plane or as we have seen in the second case in case of w shape or channel section we can calculate how we can calculate the x bar so x bar will be similar to case 2 so by using this equation we can determine the shear lag factor and in case of round hollow sections so with a single connection gathered plate through slot in the hollow section so in this case actually if we have a hollow section so we will make a slot over here and then insert the plate here and then weld it on both sides so in the cross section it will look like this here we have weld here weld here we have weld so we have made the slide uh, slot in the hollow section and then we have inserted the plate in it and then weld weld on all four sides so in that case if the length of weld is greater than 1.3 times this diameter of the shape then u should be equal to 1 and if the length of weld is greater than d but less than 1.3 d then we can use this 1.3 1 minus x bar over l and x bar will be equal to d over pi so by using this expression we can calculate the shear lag factor similarly in case of rectangular hollow section so we have two cases either we make the slot and then insert the plate and weld so in that case this length of weld should be more than this edge the length of weld should be more than this edge and we can determine the shear lag factor by using this equation and here x bar will be equal to this formula we can determine by using this expression and similarly if we use two gathered plates or two plates to connect with this hollow section one at the top and one at the bottom so in that case the length of weld should be greater than h again and u can be determined by using this formula and x can be calculated by using this expression the okay, next case is for W, M, S, R, H, P sections, shapes like this, our T's cut from these shape, or if we cut these shapes to make them T's. So if U is calculated per case 2, as we have discussed in the case 2, the larger value is permitted to be used. So either use the case 2 or estimate the values by using this case 7 and consider the larger value. So what it is with flanges connected with the three or more fastener per, per line in the direction of load so if this flange have three or more fasteners per line so in that case we will see whether the width of flange this width is more than two by third of the depth two by third of the depth sorry we will consider if this is a flange and this is the depth this is depth and this is flange width of flange so this width of flange should be greater than 2 by third of d so in that case we can consider this u value is equal to 0 0.9 uh, 
if it is not greater than 2 by third of t then we can consider the value 0 0.85 or calculate by using case 2 and compare with these two values and consider the larger one similarly if web is connected with four or more fasteners so this was the case when flange is connected but if this web is connected with the plates so in that case and the number of fasteners are four or more per line so in that case we can use this u equal to 0 0.7 okay next case is single or double angle section so if we use the case 2 then we can determine 1 minus x bar over l or otherwise with four or more fasteners per line in the direction of loading then we can use this value so if there are four or more fasteners per line then we can use this value 0 0.8 or if there are three fasteners or three bolts per line then we can use this 0 0.6 value or otherwise we can use the case 2 by using this formula we can calculate the shear lag factor so the exact value of shear lag factor can be calculated once we know the detail of connection but initially for the design we need to estimate its value or we need to consider a reasonable value for this u shear lag factors so sometime we can consider its value 0 0.85 or any reasonable value consider it and then after deciding deciding the connection detail recheck the shear lag factor value and again recheck for the capacity at the net section the shear strength or the tensile strength in fracture at the net section we need to consider after designing the connection we will solve this example in the next video.